Next, let's head to the planet Saturn. There it is over there. So this is what the ancient planet Saturn looks like. There are no rings right now. In automatic photo mode, this planet looks like this. Right now, its temperature is 1804 degrees Celsius. It has 19 moons as indicated, a diameter of 124,756 kilometers. And its mass is about 0.22, roughly speaking, of Jupiter's mass. And on it, a solar day already lasts 16 hours and 39 minutes. As we can see here, the orbits of its moons are being shown. Now let's take a look at all of them. And the first moon in this system is Tethys. We're approaching. Correction, the first major moon of Saturn. So Tethys has a diameter of 1059 kilometers, and its mass is very small. The average temperature is 1771 degrees Celsius. This is how it looks in automatic photo mode. Now I'll descend to the surface. From the surface, we can see the majestic Saturn in the sky. Now I'll turn on HDR. Well, in HDR, the protoplanetary disk is clearly visible, but I also want to take a look at the Sun. Here, as you can see, the Sun isn't visible from this side, but the light from Saturn and the glow of the Moon's molten rock illuminate everything so much that it's incredibly bright. In automatic photo mode, of course, everything looks more pleasant to the eye, but in reality, everything is very clearly visible. I've moved to the day side, where the Sun is visible, and the distance to the Sun is listed as 5.16 astronomical units. Of course, here we have Dione, Rhea, and there's Titan. Well, of course, we can't miss Titan. Let's fly to Titan. Wow, it looks so incandescent. The temperature is 1417 degrees Celsius. In HDR mode, it looks like this. Once again, auto mode, and again, HDR. Well, it's clear enough. At the moment, there's a thin atmosphere made up of the element C8H18 from sulfur dioxide. The diameter is 5,149 kilometers, and the mass is 1.76 times that of the moon. Here I am on the surface of Titan. The landscape here is incredible, with a glowing view of the star, the protoplanetary disk, and the planet Saturn. If you turn on the automatic photo mode, everything becomes even more incredibly bright. So I'm switching back to HDR. Well, that's what Titan is like here in the past. Pretty interesting. Also, remember I told you that two moons will collide here soon and form Hyperion and Chrysalis? It looks like they're already here, sort of, as I can see. Well, here's some object, a dwarf moon from Hemis, labeled Hyperion Impactor. Let's fly over and see what this object is. So, as I understand it, this moon will collide with Hyperion or something and form two new moons. Well, that makes sense. And here, in fact, it says that the dwarf moon Proto-Hyperion already exists. Let's take a look. So, I guess that object will collide with this one? Well, this is precisely what Proto-Hyperion actually looks like. And I also clearly saw this particular object right here, guys. This is Chrysalis, so let's fly over and take a closer look. It's quite strange that they're already present here, even though the original creator of this entire system explicitly wrote that they would eventually collide much later and only then would these moons truly form, but oh well. At least we can see what they look like here. By the way, the diameter of this object is listed as 1469 kilometers. Well guys, we missed something. Let me tell you, there's a protoplanet here, Ceres, Vesta and Pallas. They currently orbit between Jupiter and Saturn, but soon they will move closer to the center. So here's Ceres. Let's fly closer and take a look. Here's ancient Ceres. This is how it looks. I'll also turn on HDR. Well, the shape and color of the object are quite similar to how they are now. The diameter is 950 kilometers. All right, got it. Now let's look at Vesta. I'm heading there. This is what a glowing asteroid looks like. The diameter is 509 kilometers, and in automatic photo mode, it looks really unusual. I actually like it. And let's not forget to check out Pallas as well. Heading there now. This is how it looks. The diameter is 511 kilometers, turning on HDR. Well, everything's clear. Next up, we have the ice giants. Here, they are still young and continue to grow. One of them will be ejected from the system in a few hundred million years. I think you already know which planet I'm talking about. So, let's take a look at them. Basically, what we have here is Planet X, and it's this one that's going to be ejected from the solar system soon. This is how it looks in this system. It's quite hot. The temperature is 1506 degrees Celsius. I'm also switching to HDR mode. Wow. An HDR Planet X looks just like a star. And here you can see the star, the protoplanetary disk. Truly incredible. Switching back to automatic photo mode, and here's some more information about this planet. This is our hot mini Neptune. Its mass is 0.37 times the mass of Earth. So, actually, it's not that big. Its diameter is 19,222 kilometers. It has helium, methane, and many other elements in its atmosphere. Well, that makes sense. 
But a sad fate awaits this planet. It will be ejected from the system. By the way, this planet doesn't have any moons here. I hadn't noticed, but on this side of planet X there are these dark spots in the upper layers of the atmosphere. It actually looks pretty interesting. The distance to the sun is 6.04 astronomical units. Next, strangely enough, Neptune orbits, not Uranus as we're used to. Yes, that's actually how it was in the past. So I'm flying over to Neptune. This is what Neptune looks like up close. Let me also turn on the automatic photo mode for you. Oh, we can already see its spot in the upper layers. Looks interesting. There are these striped textures, like on gas giants. Interesting. Switching HDR back on. And as we can see, it's a very luminous planet. Its average temperature is 1456 degrees Celsius, the diameter is 18777 kilometers, and its mass is almost five times that of Earth. I've switched to automatic photo mode. And here's another wonderful view for you of Neptune and our star the Sun. And guys, there's something else interesting to observe here. So as you can see, here's Neptune's orbital path, here's the marker, and right on its orbit there's an object called Minerva and it's indicated that it will collide with Neptune in the future. Let's take a look at what kind of object this is. Well, it really is on the same orbit. And basically, it's a rocky world, molten at 1467 degrees Celsius. Its diameter is as much as 12,015 kilometers. So roughly speaking, it's about the size of Venus. And its mass is one and a half times that of Earth. So this planet is even more massive than Earth. In automatic photo mode, it looks like this. Actually, even more beautiful, I think. For some reason I like it better this way. Next we're flying to the planet Uranus. Let's take a look at it. Here, this is the last major planet in the system. This is what it looks like here. Its average temperature is 1136 degrees Celsius. Its diameter is 18961 kilometers. And its mass is 3.92 times that of Earth. The distance to the Sun is 8.47 astronomical units. I'll turn on HDR mode. This is what Uranus looks like in HDR mode. It's just incredibly bright. And I'll also mention that right now it has a reasonable axial tilt. It's at 23 degrees. But there's one of the super Earths here. Its name is Boreas. It's a failed gas giant orbiting quite closely near the planet Uranus. Here you can actually see its orbit. Here's Uranus's orbit and here is the orbit of this planet Boreas. So it turns out it's orbiting close to Uranus and heading toward a catastrophic collision. Let's fly closer and take a look at this planet. So this is what the planet looks like here. What's interesting about it is that it's quite large. 11,357 kilometers in diameter and has a mass two and a half times that of Earth. And apparently this planet collided with Uranus in the past and as a result of that collision knocked Uranus onto its side. That's why Uranus now has such an axial tilt and lies on its side in the solar system. I'll also tell you that in the vast outer solar system there are literally thousands of small icy planetesimals and early centaurs scattered everywhere. No matter where I click, you can clearly see there are some fascinating objects. Let's randomly fly up to this particular object right here. Let's see what exactly this is. Here we have just an asteroid with a diameter of 136 kilometers, quite a large one. And its temperature is already minus 175 degrees, so it's cooled down quite a bit. Let's pick this object here as another example. Let's take a look at it too. Well, it also says cold asteroid. The diameter is even larger, 225 kilometers, and it's minus 183 degrees. Now guys, let's take a look at the Proto-Kuiper belt. By the way, it contains thousands of small asteroids and comets, as well as dwarf planets. Famous dwarf planets such as Pluto, Makemake, Eris, Triton and many others are already in the process of forming. And Pluto will soon capture a moon as well. So as you can see here we have Proto-Pluto, here's Proto-Triton, here's Makemake and here's Eris. Alright, let's go visit them. And the first one will be Proto-Pluto. Let's go. Wow, I truly like how it actually looks. Don't you agree? It already looks a bit like the Pluto we're used to seeing. Its average temperature is 657 degrees Celsius. We can see that on the dark side there's still some glowing hot rock, but overall the temperature is still high at this point. I'll turn on HDR mode. Everything looks dimmer this way, of course. Here's the view of the star. By the way, the distance to the star is shown as 12.92 astronomical units and Pluto's diameter is 2,372 kilometers, with a mass of 0.17 times the mass of the moon. I'll descend somewhere into these brownish areas here. And here on its surface, let me just fly a little bit over here as well, right here. Well, basically it's a barren surface. Here we can see a view of almost the entire solar system and the objects forming there. 
But overall, if you fly a bit forward and land on these bright areas descend here, this is what the view looks like. At the moment, Pluto does not have a moon, it doesn't have its second companion Charon, but most likely it will capture one soon. And now, let's fly to the dwarf protoplanet Triton. Yes, right now it is considered a dwarf planet here, because there's a widely accepted theory that Triton was later captured by the gravitational pull of Neptune. But at this moment, it is a dwarf planet here. So that's basically how it looks. And here guys, it's unusual. Here we have a double planetary system, as you can see. But first, let's talk about Triton. Its temperature is 826 degrees Celsius, its diameter is 2705 kilometers, and its mass is 0.28, that of the moon. Let's descend straight to its surface. I'll switch to automatic photo mode. Wow, what a star. Let me tell you the distance. The distance to the star is exactly 11 astronomical units. And let's look up at the sky. And what do we see? We see this kind of object. This is Triton's second natural companion. These two objects orbit each other around a common gravitational center of mutual mass. And it says that this is the dwarf planet Tritia. That's an interesting name. Its mass is 0.02 times the mass of the moon. It has an interesting glow along the equator. But on this side, everything seems to have already cooled down. The average temperature is 776 degrees Celsius. I'm going to land on its surface. Wow, look where I landed. Let me show you. There's some kind of deep pit here. That's amazing! It's the first time I've ended up in such a deep pit in Space Engine. I'll fly out of here now. Look, it's just an incredible pit. And there's another one right nearby. Are these really such deep craters here? Now I've risen higher. The surface is so uneven, all covered in pits and elevations. And here you can see Triton in the sky from this moon. Now we're heading to the dwarf planet Makemake. This is what Makemake looks like. It has a reddish surface and the temperature is 595 degrees Celsius. Well, it's pretty clear. Now I'm flying over to the dwarf planet Eris. This is what Eris looks like. It's already quite cooled down, but still, it's 566 degrees Celsius there. And here, besides these objects, there are also some objects that are unknown to us. So I'm flying over there now. Here it says Haumia Center or something like that. Well, here is a planet called Ateisina, and this is what it looks like. And it says that it will collide with Haumia. And in the background, we can see the planet Proto Haumia. And this is basically how Haumia looks. Most likely, after colliding with that object, Haumia will change into the shape we're used to seeing, and satellites and rings will appear. But right now it's 619 degrees Celsius there. And by the way, let's compare their sizes and mass. Proto Haumea Dawain, as stated, has a diameter of 1300 kilometers, and a mass that is 6% of the moons. The second object also has a diameter of 1300 kilometers. They're exactly the same size, and the mass is also 6% of the moon's mass. And guys, you won't believe it, I found Pluto's second future companion here. It's Proto Charon. Well, that's how it's written here. Right now, it's indicated that this is the dwarf planet Februs. That's the name. But there's a slash and it says Proto Charon. So in the future, this object will become Charon, but for now it's called Februs. 642 degrees Celsius on this object. I turned on the automatic photo mode and here you can't see any hotspots on this object at all, as if it really has completely cooled down. Although it's 642 degrees, there still should have been some hot areas. And here, if you look further into the scattered disk, if it even existed back then, well, further beyond the Kuiper belt, it turns out there are a lot of different proto-comets here. No matter where you click, there's something everywhere. There are even asteroids here. Let me show you one of the protocomets, in general, an asteroid berry center of protocomets. So I even found a system of two comets that orbit around a common center of mass. Here you can see two comets. Where the pointer is, that's the berry center around which they orbit. And by the way, it actually looks like there's already some kind of tail here. Let's see, is it from this object or what? Well, they're cold here, minus 222 degrees, and the second object is also minus 22 degrees. It's not clear what this silhouette is. If you zoom out, well, yes, it does actually come from these comets. Look, if you switch to automatic photo mode, you can't see anything. If you use HDR, then you can already see some kind of trail. Why the comet's tail is visible here, I have no idea. But oh well. This is roughly what our solar system looked like 4.55 billion years ago. It was an interesting journey, but this is only the beginning. Stay tuned for the second part of the solar system story, where we'll see Proto-Earth, Theia and other planets we know today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and leave a comment about what you thought of today's story of the solar system. If there were any inaccuracies in the video, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you again in the universe.